on today's show, the Dallas Mavericks only have 18 games left in the season. What do they have to do to end the season well going into the playoffs? Oh my gosh, hopefully. On today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Welcome to the Mavericks. don't believe you shouldn't be here loyalty never fades away and welcome you are locked on to the dallas mavericks my name is nick angstead media member and nba channel manager for the locked on podcast network your team every day thanks for being part of the show making locked on maps your first listen today where the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day leave a five-star review like the video on youtube and comment anything below let me know in the comment section what's one thing the dallas mavericks have to do in the last 18 games of the season. I'm curious what you guys have to say. This episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, the Pathfinder, or the Armada and go to your next big adventure. Check them out today at NissanUSA.com. And joining me from 105.3 The Fan Nights. What you got for me, Reggie Atatula? This is not planned. We did not plan to wear the same color shirt. Uh, this just happened, I guess, t- our, today we both felt like bouncers. You know what I mean? I don't know what it was, but we just decided to give big bouncer energy on this program. I gotta, I gotta oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> I don't have a chain near me, but I got a, I got a cable for uh, headphones. Add a little bit of swag to it. We're ready to go. <laughs> uh, uh, Pat and I on Locked On NBA this week both wore burgundy same time, and I was like, that is such a random color. Yeah, that's, both a, that's a pretty <laughs> unique color to end both up accidentally walking into At there. the same time. Oh, man. So we're going to talk about the Mavs last 18 games of the season. It is. Guys, we are almost quite literally one month from the end of the Mavericks season this year. That is Re- regular whoa. season. Regular. Well, what are you doing right now? <laughs> the end of the regular season. You're correct about that. Last year has scarred me to no end. <laughs> You're like, you can't guarantee anything. Can't, nothing is nothing is promised. <laughs> I went to church every Sunday my whole life, and they kept telling you nothing is promised, and I did not believe them until the Mavs missed the postseason last year. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to go through it. So you're telling me the Dallas Mavericks are a religious experience? Uh, I mean, Yeah. Okay. You you go to a Mavs game and you listen to Sean Heath go, hey, Mavs fan, and screaming while he's standing up like a freaking pastor. Like he he literally a P, Mavs PA guy. If you guys haven't been to a Mavs game, and some of you don't live in the U.S., so I understand that. The Mavs PA guy, the public address announcer, that announces all the players' names, that tells you which players are coming into the game and all that. Sean Heath is a national treasure. He will at the beginning of the game when he starts announcing the starting lineup and he starts announcing all that he will stand up hold the mic <laughs> and just start like turning around as if he's the guy that says let's get ready to rumble like in the middle of the ring and it is really electric and i really appreciate that i don't remember which buffer that is. actually i believe that's michael buffer that's the guy's name mm-hmm. yeah there you go i don't like sean heath's um uh oh we're airing this out oh okay. yeah, yeah yeah boom shaka Derek. Boom Shaka Josh Green. <laughs> Cannot stand it. Sean, love all the stuff that you do. Love Boom Shaka Lively. That one's great. Lively throws out a big dunk. Love that one. Boom Shaka Luca. That works. That works too. Wait, works too? That That's the one that works better than Lively. Boom Shaka Luca. That one's great. Lively. Okay, lively, yeah. that one. The Boom Shaka Kyrie. No. Boom Shaka Daniel Gafford. No. <laughs> Scratching my my brain when it does that in a bad way. Okay, we're gonna talk about the things the Mavs need to do in the last 18 games of the season before eventually. Before yeah. we keep yeah, before I keep talking about things that Mavs, you know what else I want to talk <laughs> <laughs> Mavs man and I are really cool now. Oh, and man. uh he listens to the show, he's part of the raccoon squad. Oh, just, we need to talk you just remind me to bring that back around. Yeah, we probably yeah. need to talk about that at some point yeah. on the show again. Uh let's talk let's talk about the things the Mavs need to do. First thing I think the Mavs need to do, and I'm not just gonna say win all the games. Sure, of course. Win all the I games. think they need to start building confidence in role players because there are certain guys on this team that you look at and you go, okay, these guys are going to be important. We know what Luca and Kyrie can do at any given moment. These guys are like luxury sports cars. You turn them on and boom, you're getting the vroom vroom. You're getting to the basket. You know what you're getting. You're getting the shot. They can get their points anytime and the maps need them to. But these other guys, I'll start with PJ Washington because I think they need to keep 
getting P.J. Washington going. He's had three mm. games recently above 17 points. Use him in the pick and roll a little bit more. And I kind of want to see him at center at least a couple times. Can we at least try that a few times? It's one of the few lineup combinations we just have not seen at all yet. They haven't even tried to do that yet. I think it's because they don't have enough big wings. If they had one more big right. wing, they could run that lineup. And so they probably won't do it. But I, I kind of just want to see it like at least once. That's fair. No, I'd, I'd love to see that, especially with uh, Jace Kidd notoriously being a tinkerer. And I think, look, let me ask, let me put this in the form of a question. Like, how far of movement do you think this Mavericks team is actually capable of at this point? In the standings at the end of the season? Yeah. So right now, they're, we're recording this 10 p.m. On, on Sunday. By the time you listen to this, <laughs> anything could have happened. That's right. The Mavs are, the if the Lakers win again, well, I won't even do that. The Mavs are a game and a half above the Lakers. We'll see what happens. The Lakers are playing right now. They are a half game behind the Kings. They're a game behind the Suns, and they own the tiebreaker with the Suns. So I think, and they're three games behind the Pelicans. They don't own the tiebreaker with the Pelicans yet. They have an opportunity to, and I will tell you about that sure. later, in the, later in the show. But I think they can get to fifth. That's stretching it. Three games and 18 is really tough to overcome, but they could get the... They could get the tiebreaker in there. So I think they can get to sixth. They they could possibly get to five. Yeah. And so the reason why I ask that is I don't know how much they need to be singularly focused on just what do we have right now that we feel is working and stick to it. Like I think more they are better mm -hmm. served doing the things that Jason Kidd seemingly typically likes to do, which is figuring out more about this team. And which is why I lean into I lean towards what you're saying. Especially like especially with the PJ Washington. Um especially they, they seem to want to have big or sorry, uh small small ball lineups, ones yeah. that have a little bit of size to them still, but small ball lineups that they think they can throw out there. And so yeah, seeing if that is one of the small ball lineups that can be useful for you is going to be huge, especially once you get to the playoffs and it's a lot more about what kind of chess moves can you make? And so ha knowing what you have in your back pocket can be extremely useful for a team that you only put together not too long ago after the trade deadline. And you want to figure out as many things about all of the different facets of it that you can. You do. And so I think that's one area that they, they just need to keep <laughs> pushing. And he's the PJ Washington is just the first role player that I want to mention in this. They need to sure. help build the confidence of the next one is a, well, let's, let's do this instead. Josh Green or Derek Jones Jr. If you had to pick one of them to build to boost confidence in, you're like, all right, I'm Jason Kidd. I get, I have a 25 minute a game spot and I have a 15 minute a game spot. Which one are you giving to which player to end the season? Josh Green or Derek Jones Jr. I, I really choose. I want to say Derek Jones Jr. because like, but it feels a little inexplicable. I feel like the right answer is Josh Green, um, because like there's, it seems like there's more upside there. Right. Like he's a younger player. He I mean, he you've seen him give you better performances. I think it just hasn't happened as consistently as you would like, even though he found a level of consistency for a little stretch there. So, like, I feel like Josh Green is probably the right answer. Um, I just maybe I'm just drawn in by the idea of he jumped high and his arms along. Right. For Derek <laughs> Jones, Jr. He does. The the question, I think, between the two of them, and I think this is a real choice the Mavericks have to make. We've seen it the last couple of games where Josh Green was starting for about like 20-so games, and then he went to the bench, and Derek Jones Jr. started. Like I think this is a decision Jason Kidd is actually making between the two. The, the, the thing is, if you're just trying to build confidence in a guy to end the season, because that's where you are. You're not going to add new skills. You're not going to yeah. like develop something in 18 games. Would you rather bet on... Derek Jones Jr.'s three-point shot coming back around to where it was at the beginning of the season to respectable levels or Josh Green figuring out how to navigate screens by, by the end of the season because I think those are their two biggest weaknesses. It's Josh yeah. Green as a point-of-attack defender. The Mavs have struggled. They really struggled in that area when he was – uh, when he was starting, had some good games with him starting too. I'll, I'll point that out as well. But I, I feel like overall he struggled with that. And Derek Jones Jr. has struggled with his three-point shot. So I think that's the decision that they're kind of stuck with right now and trying to figure out between these two. Yeah, and I, I feel like you have to – I, sometimes I feel like I'm leaning into a level of naivete because it's like how many times do you go back to the same well in some ways? But like Josh mm -hmm. Green, like again – We've seen we've seen the athleticism that he has. We see the way in which like he can be a catalyst for all sorts of things with energy and uh, athleticism. And there's something in me that just goes, I feel like he can. And we've seen him go from wow, he's struggling with that to shining, you know, radiantly in various times. And so Ooh. 
I'd like to think that, you know, oh, you like the word radiantly? Yeah. I liked all the words you just used. Thank you. And so I, I like to think that like the screen navigation, that there's something in there that would click for him with enough time. Um, whereas I think Derek Jones Jr. further along the development curve as a as a basketball player. Yeah. And I think largely we know what he is and three point consistent three point shooter isn't one of those things that comes to mind. Coming up, I'm going to ask a question right now that. I will. I know the answer I'm going to hear from from everyone that's listening right now. But I think Reggie and I may have different answers for it. Uh oh. What do you do with Tim Hardaway Jr. the last 18 games of the season? Okay, I heard everyone. I heard all the in unison. I heard the answer. I'll tell you why it's different on today's Locked On Mavs coming up. Are you the kind of driver that likes to take things a little bit? Further, ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to that next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes, so you can check it out. They have the class-exclusive Google built-in, always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. You don't have to fumble around. I got a car, and it's, it's not a Nissan, sadly, and I get in my car, and I have to fumble around for my phone and to even get the map to show up. You don't have to worry about that. They've got Google Maps, Google Assistant, Google Play, right on that 12.3-inch HD touchscreen with the infotainment system. You got that in the 2024 Nissan Rogue, the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. Also, check out the 2024 Nissan Armada. It will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to eight, eight humans. In a first-class luxury and style, tow a bigger Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take that Nissan Rogue, the Armada, or the Pathfinder and go find your next big adventure at ShopNissanUSA.com. Again, that is ShopNissanUSA.com. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Locked On Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. Appreciate each and every one of you. If you want to subscribe to get more content, I do watchbacks where I'll watch back a, a whole quarter. You can watch the whole quarter with me and see what we're, you know, see what, what things I'm pointing out, defense, uh, funny things, all kinds of stuff. Subscribe to the subtext. Click the link in the description or text the number that's on the screen right now. Text the number in the description as well. Text it. You get text straight sent straight to your phone, game notes, things like that. Subscribe to the subtext. I'm trying to get... I'll just, I'll tell everybody. I'm trying to get to 300 and I'm like, I'm like 15 away right now from, from 300 of you guys on the subtext. So if you've been waiting around for it, we're coming into the playoffs. There's going to be more stuff, all that. Check out the subtext. All right, Reggie, let's talk about things the Mavericks need to do to play, to end the season well, last 18 games. And I talked about building the confidence of role players. I've got a couple other questions with that. We talked about Josh Green versus Derek Jones Jr. We talked about PJ Washington building his confidence. <sighs> Now, what do you do with Tim Hardaway Jr.? I've been curious because we have not talked about this since he's gone on this struggle. What do you do with Tim Hardaway Jr.? Going through this, he kind of had a bounce back quarter against the Pistons. He had one good quarter, basically, shooting the ball that third quarter. Right. It ended up being an okay-looking game for him in a box score. But what do you do with him? Uh, as much as, again, I also heard the the loud uh, cries <laughs> for him to be uh, shot into the sun. But <laughs> right. I feel like, the answer likely is continue to play him just with a short hook. Yeah. Right. Like it, you get a, cause I don't think as much as I've tried to think about this and maybe the idea that you stick with him is to not lose his confidence. Who are we kidding? We know who Tim Hardaway jr. Is those <laughs> shots are going up. Confidence is not an issue. Right. And so if it is, if you are playing him and I it's, I get it. Right. I know there's a, I can hear the eyes rolling myself. Right. I have been in that place where I've heard people suggest the similar thing and been like, I don't know. But one thing you can look around at this team is, and you see the ways in which they need that level of jump shooting. And so yeah. if he is knocking it down, we can sort of deal with some of the other issues that come along with that. If he is not, we cannot. And then, and I think you have to be as the head coach really attuned to does he have it or does he not? you out of here and now like make adjustments accordingly to try and find that elsewhere in the team. But I still think that he is sadly enough, your best option for getting that when he is going, you just have to see if he's going on a particular night. And that sounds like a terrible answer, but it's the best one I got for you. You said the head coach has to be what? You gotta ask them. I'm just the coach. I understand. I understand. I can't fix that right now. Actually, I can't fix that ever personally. But, you can't you know. fix it at all. You know what? Neither can Cuban probably at this, at this point. <laughs> he can fix 27% of it probably. <laughs> wow. How would that work? 
I'm just like, this is my 27% head coach. <laughs> Mike Budenholzer is now the coach on Thursdays and Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> Uh no, because Jason Kidd's the coach. Uh, we yeah. I I did the whole thing where I said I don't think he should be the coach anymore. I that's been my stance now ever since the their last loss, well, last loss against Indiana. I was like, this is done. He they, they're not hearing the message. But then the next day, the very next day, honestly, twelve hours later after I did that episode where the post came, I was like, fire Jason Kidd. This is it. I came and I was here with Dana Larson, and we just both go. They're not going to. So no. let's just see what they're going to do the rest of the season and talk right. about wh that, what that is. And so that's why I haven't even gone full in on the whole Jason Kidd thing because it's just not worth it to, to do that because they're, they're not going to just yet. So Tim Hardaway Jr., the 10 games after the trade and not including the Pistons game from the other night, 8.6 points a game. This is a guy averaging 18 points a game, shooting 40% yeah. from three coming in. Eight points a game, shooting under 30% from three. And his assist turnover ratio had gotten a little bit better, but it was a, a negative. Uh, and man, he had just really struggled. His shot selection, it did not feel like he was, it didn't, it didn't feel like he was being coached to me because his shot selection has just had gotten worse in that stretch. And you talked about his confidence in his green light, but there's some things you go, hey man, you don't have to take that shot. Like you, you can if you want to. You don't have to. You can pass to her for a better shot. And I feel like at the towards the end of that run where you mentioned the short leash, Jason Kidd has had him on a short leash. Yeah, he has, right? He was averaging 35. I mean, I read his, I read his minutes. I'm going to do it again. Here's like the, you know, a bunch of games before the trades, 39, 39, 40, 28, 31, 34, 32, 35, 36, 32, 38 minutes. And some of that, I imagine, was also having to deal with, you know, dealing with some injuries. But, I I mean, your sure. point still absolutely remains. Then the trades happen. 25, 21, 26, 30 minutes. Then all of a sudden, you're like, all right, he's not playing that well. 23 minutes, 26 minutes, 25, 20 minutes, yeah. 14 minutes, 13 mm -hmm. minutes, 20 minutes. And then even against the Pistons, when he was shooting well from three, 17 minutes. <laughs> Again, so Jason Kidd has shortened the leash. and For sure. I, I said already, I think that he should not be the coach, but I think he's doing the right thing with him because I don't think you can completely go away from him. And I don't know that just switching to Hardy is the right thing either. No, I, I'm not certain that that is particularly right thing. I would like to see some of it though. Like I do wonder. I would too. Yeah. I don't know why this has completely gone away from, like that has not been an option at all. I do think though, as you're balancing minutes, and I guess sometimes it's just the minutes don't go all the way around. I do like this very slow, but like it is happening slowly, but it's happening is getting Exum more minutes again, because yeah. I do think that he exists as some level of maybe buffer to one of these issues, especially as he had gotten better shooting threes. And so maybe you give him an opportunity with a little bit more volume. And then the ways in which he adds some playmaking that Tim Hardaway Jr. clearly does not right <laughs> defense that Tim Hardaway Jr. clearly does not. And then just like a, a, a symbiosis with Luka Doncic, that's really nice when you see him on the floor. And so, like, I would like to see those minutes uptake. But, yeah, I, even him, um, I think he might be your best option at getting some of some of those things outside of just like, hey, Jaden Hardy, get out here and shoot, uh, which I don't think you're going to see. But, yeah, I still think that Tim has a level of place on this team as as uh, much the chagrin of a lot of people watching. Yeah, every single if – you, if you're confused by the joke we made earlier, I know every single person listening right now is saying, just bench him. Don't play him. I don't want to see him on my screen anymore. Maybe some of that is – has been softened because of the, the Pistons game, but it shouldn't be. <laughs> I don't think that – I think he had one good quarter. I don't think he had a, a good game necessarily it, in that one. It can't even be softened by this the uh, Pistons game because we've seen this movie before, right? Like yeah. we've rid the roller coaster of, okay, it's gotten better now, right? And I people were sick of like that at the start of the season when he was in, or at least in some imagination, six men of the year territory, right? People were like, don't fall for the hype. And ultimately, right, those people have somewhat been proven correct. I, I don't even know if someone is the right word to put in there but um yeah like a, he it, yeah it's it's not really the best thing to 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 feel like uh but he he does still seem to be your best option for jump shooting when he gets it the problem is it just does not feel like he gets it he's fallen completely out of six man he's on he's not even top five it's monk minus 240 Re, nas reed plus 450 and then drop off to bobby portis plus 1400 norman powell plus 1400 karis lavert plus 1600 they're all kind of right in that same second tier and then Tim Hardaway Jr. plus 2,900. <laughs> That's a steep drop there on FanDuel. So. And God bless you if you're willing to go for those odds just because they're big odds. Sincerely, God bless you. Well, if you want big odds, Jordan Clarkson, who has not played well at all, plus 6,000. So, yeah. 
Uh, coming up, let's talk about the other things the Mavericks need to do. The other keys to the Mavericks end of the season to end the season well. We'll talk about that and more coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. We know that if you're hiring for a small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. At LinkedIn Jobs, they have the tools to help you find your team faster and, and for free. You can post a job for free and check that out as well. And LinkedIn is a vast network of more than a billion professionals. I'm on there. I'm sure Reggie's on there. There's a bunch of people. There's a bunch of people that are on there on LinkedIn trying to figure out, can we get any jobs? <laughs> so you should tell them that you can, you have a job for them. It knows the small businesses wearing so many hats that you might not have time or resources to hire. It's very hard to try and sift through a billion people. LinkedIn helps you find that uh, person that you need and do it faster. They even have launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions. That is tough. So I'm not... Some, some of my jobs, I don't know how they write a description for my job at Locked On. They even launched that feature making process even easier and quicker. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. Again, linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Mavs. thought I'd change it up a little bit. <laughs> I like it. That was not what I was, what I was expecting, but it was a welcome surprise. <laughs> it's the best. Oh, that that's that drops lives forever. Uh, I, I'm so glad that that one person filmed that one DJ concert that one time and put it on Twitter, and no one could ever find it ever again, and I, I grabbed it. I'm very glad. What's another thing the Mavs need to do? What's a key for the Mavs to finish the season well? Um, For one, I think close big. Mm. I know that mm. they Jason Kidd has kind of uh, really leaned into his infatuation, and I think rightfully so with Maxi Kleba. Maxi Kleba has shown, once again, his value to this team. But I, I, I know that they're defensively, you want to be able to be switchable or what have you. But I think what's been very what's been very obvious is the need to have one of these bigs on the floor late in games uh, for you, especially because I understand that you know you're not you're still not going to be an incredible rebounding team. But like whatever the five out offensive things that you gain, like I don't I think we all understand Kyrie and Luca closing time. I'm not really worried about that. What I need yeah. more is that that big threat, the opportunity to maybe, you know, threaten defenses vertically and then just getting rebounds an opportunity to do those things. I think we've seen uh, over the last couple of games, the ways in which, yeah, yeah, yeah. All that five, you know, small ball. That sounds good. Give me a big on the floor to close out these games. We'll make these things go a lot better. With those trades, they kind of changed their personality as a team because they had been so small for so long. They bring in, yeah. they they draft lively, and then they realize they can play lively early on in the season, and so that changes you up a little bit. Because then you're like, okay, now we at least have one center. They didn't have one center for eight <laughs> years. It felt like, yeah. Then you go get another center, and then you go, okay, overnight, sort of, or in the last like three months, we changed the complexion of our team and changed completely changed what we are as a team because now we can play bigger and it's it's been tough for them to try and lean into because there are there are issues and i get sure. why i get why kid has closed with maxi and it's worked in some games where they just needed spacing to get luca into the paint to get kyrie into the paint to get them you know some open shots and when you get spacing around luca it's it's, it's game over i mean think about how good the offense was with porzingis and porzingis wasn't even hitting his shots then right the way he is even now but yeah that, Lively and Gafford were my next two if, if we had more time to talk about the building confidence of role players because I think they're going to need one of them, if not both of them, in certain series to try and figure out you know, how to how to beat teams and out-rebound them because they just get destroyed on the rebounds. Think about that that Warriors series where Kevon Looney just kept getting rebound <laughs> yeah. after rebound after rebound. He doesn't even play anymore for, for them. Like He doesn't even start for them anymore. And like. Yeah, I think they, they are going to need those two guys. So that, that's something that I think they need to build confidence in. It seems like they're doing it with Gafford right now, lively out with personal reasons in the last game. But yeah. And real quick, can I do I, – I would like to mention, right, and it seems like Kid did, like, I guess this realization. Closing some bigger does not mean that Max Kleber does not have to be on the floor. He can play at the four. Closing yeah, lineups. they've done that too. And so, I I mean, I liked it when I saw it. Just I, It seems like the the benefits of having that big on the floor are so are so important to them right now. Yeah. My last one was win crucial matchups. There's crucial yeah. ones. There's a lot of crucial matchups. Let's talk about the, the schedule the rest of the season. So the Mavericks have two different types of gear, two, maybe four different types of games that, that they need to win. 
play-in competition. They play the Warriors three more times, March 13th to this week on Wednesday. That's a huge game. April 2nd and April 5th. Uh, the one on Wednesday is a home game. The one on April 2nd is a Tuesday. That's an away game. And then there's another home game Friday, April 5th. That one is huge. Those are massive, massive games for the play-in because if the Warriors win all three of those, they're probably moving ahead and you're in nine or 10 probably at that point. Kings are the other one. They're, you're, yeah. they're your direct competition. Those are probably even more important than the Warriors ones. Two games in a row, March 26th and March 20, 29th, both in Sacramento. And so those are massive too. The next like subgroup that's super important for these like crucial matchups, the Southwest Division. And I mentioned earlier, the Mavs don't own the tiebreaker with the Pelicans because they're tied two and two. But they can because it goes... It goes. This is insane. Oh, we still have vestiges of, of division. Division matters in Ugh. just this instance Ugh. because it goes head to head record, the tiebreaker. And then it goes to, uh, then it goes head to head. Then it goes division leader. But if they're tied, then they're both tied. And so then you got to figure out which one. And they're tied in their division. Then it goes division win loss percentage. Oh, okay. So then it comes All down right. to who has won in their division more. And right now it is uh, Pelicans are nine and six in their division. Mavericks are eight and five. So right. They're both right there. Sure. Yeah. Okay. In their division, the Mavericks have the Rockets twice and the Spurs one more time. So they got three more division games. They can, they could easily take advantage of those. Right. That should ease. That should absolutely be wins. If you handle your business. Right? Yeah. And so speaking of handling your business, that's the next group that that could be a, a crucial matchup is the take care of business games teams under 500. They've got a bunch. I mentioned the Spurs already. They've got Utah twice. They've got the, the Rockets I mentioned them too. the Hornets one more time, the Pistons one more time, Atlanta, and then Chicago coming up on Monday. And so those are take care of business games for them. And then the last ones are the metal testers. Those are the ones are testing your metal. Where, where are you? Like, where are we in the, the pecking order? You've got OKC two more times, one to end the year, which might be a good game. Maybe not. Yeah. Denver. And then Miami one more time too. Okay. I, just, I named every single game. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Look, I mean, th the, those first, are the, I, yeah. <laughs> the the first two categories, the playing competition and the Southwest division are the ones that I'm really focusing on, but I just wanted to name all the games and see if you know, <laughs> I mean, look, they, they need to get some wins, right? Like you <laughs> said, win outside of, of win all the games, which look, win all the games, right? Like that, that would make said. people, that'd make people feel a lot better, but no, yeah, absolutely. Um, you try and get a lot of these, but you need to, you need to give yourself uh, edges where you can um, understanding just how, daunting the west looks you know any level of edge that you can give to a superstar like Luka Doncic a superstar or a star player like Kyrie Irving right any edge that you can give them to ultimately catapult them into the postseason is going to give them a significantly better shot at making things happen yeah you've got to edge the standings that's correct give me your last one what's the last key for the Mavs to end the season well lock the f in on defense man hey that's right like I I mean I we don't have to dig into what we all know. There are very clear limitations with what this roster can do defensively. At the very least, what you can do is understand what the principles are and execute them to the best of your ability. I don't feel like I'm asking a lot because I, I, am, I am damn sick of seeing people fall asleep, fall asleep weak side, right? Because this is what teams, especially those test your metal games, those teams that are capable of doing those things, they are not just running basic offense. They're going, I know what that team does. I know where they're trying to hide Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, Tim Hardaway Jr., trying to hide a weak side, which means I am attacking that space. And yeah. so at the very least, what you can do, if you get beat, you get beat, right? But don't don't contribute to your own downfall. Understand what your defensive principles are. Run them to the best of your ability and give yourself a chance at doing those things because someone falling asleep and them getting a backside cut for two points, that two points can be the difference in a lot of these games. You are not far and away better than a lot of these teams to the point where two points don't mean nothing. And so those mm. are the, those are the little edges that they can get. Um, and that is simply locking in understanding that they are not going to be a perfect defense. That's not what I'm asking for. We had, we had uh professor Atatula earlier with the $5 words. And then we just had pastor Atatula just now <laughs> preaching the, the good word of to you. You are not good enough that two points shouldn't matter. That, That'll preach. That, that'll preach right there because it's so true. And you watch that Pistons game, and I just did the, the post game for it. So if you missed that, uh, go check out the feed right right before this episode. And Luca is just falling asleep on defense. Simone Fontecchio is just getting like getting back door. Who's Simone Fontecchio? Excellent. 
who only has good games against the Mavericks. Apparently, that's right. He, keeping him in the league, baby. <laughs> It's not true. It's not true, but it all feels like he he's another he's the next Julius Randall. Uh, it's the, spiritually true. It feels true. So. The next David Good Roddy. Man. He's the next guy that like just kills the Mavericks, basically. Rowdy David Roddy. And so, yeah, you get yeah, 27 points his season high against the Mavericks. And then January 1st, he had that game where he had 24 points against the Mavs with the Jazz. <laughs> That's right. Before he got <laughs> traded. Uh, Then he had he had a seven point game in, in December. So but. And then th- that's the game the Mavs beat him by 50. Yeah, man. Play some defense, dude. Or let's try. Right? Like that ultimately it don't breaks down. Don't beat yourself. To, don't yeah. beat yourself. That's yeah. that's the defensive that's the defensive principle is don't beat yourself on defense. Let them beat you. If they're gonna hit shots like freaking Max Struess did the other like the other game. That's nice. Okay. We did right. our best. You know, we did our best. Like, what are you gonna do? And I don't think they did their best in that game. But if they're gonna hit wild, crazy shots like that. Then it is what it is, but don't beat yourself on defense. That's that's huge key to end the season. So there are keys: build confidence of role players, win the crucial matchups in the play-in competition in the division, uh, finish big or play the bigs, and figure out what you got in them, and then D the F up, lock the F on, on D, <laughs> whatever F, whatever whatever letter, Just, whatever as long co- as there's an F consonant. In there. Yeah, yeah, right. We need to Absolutely. really hammer home the point. Go check out Reggie on the fan this week. Nights, nights, nights. I'm gonna start doing that. I like that. Yeah, you should. You Real should. quiet storm vibes. Uh, it's you know you guys have a hotline too, so you can, you can call it the the, That's true. the the night hotline. Uh, speaking of the hotline, you can you can subscribe to the subtext as well. Get text straight to your phone, guys. Thanks for listening to Locked On Mavs. Peace out. Boom. <laughs> <laughs>